This question tells us that x is negative and is asking whether it's less than negative 3. So it might be a good idea to draw a number line and place 0 and negative 3 on that number line and say, look, I know that x is to the left of 0, I just want to know which side of negative 3 it's on. Now statement 1 may seem a little bit surprising because we know that x is negative and yet they're telling us that x squared is greater than 9. But you've got to remember that when you multiply a negative number times itself, the negative signs cancel out and you end up on the right side of 0. So it's not that surprising that x squared is greater than 9. But what would that mean for x? The way to do this is to take the square root of both sides and put an absolute value around the x because we don't know which side of 0 it all started from. And then we'd say that the absolute value of x is greater than 3. And in my book I call that a restraining order situation where we pretend that x is some kind of criminal who has to be more than 3 units away from 0 at all times. So x is either greater than 3 or less than negative 3. Now remember, we know that x is negative and we just wanted to know which side of negative 3 it's on. So if we know that x is negative, then x is not greater than 3, which only leaves us with x is less than negative 3, which answers the question definitively. x is to the left of negative 3. So statement 1 is sufficient on its own and we should eliminate the answer choices that claim that it's not. Let's look at statement 2 right after the intro. So in statement 2, the exponent is odd, which actually makes it a bit easier, because we don't need to worry about which side of 0 the whole thing started. If an odd exponent puts you to the right of 0, then you must have always been to the right of 0. If an odd exponent puts you to the left of 0, you must have always been to the left of 0. In this case, we're told that x cubed is to the left of negative 9, which does imply that x itself is to the left of 0, but we already knew that. We just wanted to know which side of negative 3 x is on. Now I don't know what the cube root of 9 is, but I can probably approximate it. I could probably say I know that 2 cubed is 8 and 3 cubed is 27. 9 is a lot closer to 8 than it is to 27, so based on that I'll say that the cube root of 9 is much closer to 2 than it is to 3. Based on that, I'll say that the cube root of negative 9 is somewhere around negative 2.1, let's say, or something like that. So we can tell from statement 2 that x is to the left of negative 2, or even to the left of negative 2 point something small, but what we wanted to know was whether x is to the left of negative 3. And looking at my number line, I think x could be on either side of negative 3, so this statement is not sufficient on its own, and the correct answer is A. If you found this video useful, go to quantreasoning.com for a lot more where that came from. You should also click that like button and let me know in the comments below what you'd like me to make future videos about. And of course, if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and do that and click that bell below so you get notified about future videos. See you next time.